happy Friday and welcome back to Drinking By Myself. My name is Emma and today I'm going to talk about all of the brand new May releases that I have read this month and I'm going to let you know if I think they are worth the buy. I usually work in some joke about treating yourself into that intro but I forgot to do that so... The first book on my list is one that was so hugely anticipated for me that I'm sure a lot of you were also equally excited about this one and it is finally here. That is The Favourite Sister by Jessica Knoll. So Jessica Knoll is the author of Luckiest Girl Alive which came out in 2015 I believe and I absolutely devoured. So ever since then I've been so so excited for her follow-up novel and this is it, The Favourite Sister. I also got extra excited when I found out what it was about because if you know me you'll know that I love reality TV. The Kardashians are like my favourite family on earth and this book is about a feminist reality TV show. Those are like my two favourite things smushed together. So the premise is there's two sisters, Brett and Kelly, Brett is the favourite sister and she is the star, or one of the stars of this feminist reality show that's all about career women. So she's on this show and her sister Kelly also really wants to be on it. But what we learn right from the beginning in a flash forward is that before the season is over, Brett will have been murdered. So like, was it her sister that did it? Oh my goodness, sisterly competition, that's another of my favourite things in books. This just honestly has everything that I love and that's why I was so excited. I sped through this one just as fast as the last one. I loved these like terrible characters. They're so hideous to each other. It's so brilliant. I also really loved how controversial it is, but that is just what I want to mention here is that it is controversial. There are moments where I just kept being like, I can't believe she really went there. And it's frustrating. I can't talk to you about it without giving away some really big spoilers. But basically this book is very daring. Jessica Knoll is a writer that I really, really admire. And from watching her in interviews, I just love her. I love what she has to say. She's very feminist. She's written great essays for Lenny that I really, really enjoyed. And I think that I'm really excited by what she's done here and the areas that she's gone to here. But I also think there are important conversations to have around them. And I'm really looking forward to seeing this happen. So please, other people on booktube, please read this book and let me know what you think. But in my opinion, is this one worth the buy? Should you treat yourself to this one? Yes. And not just because I want you to talk to me about it, also because I really enjoyed it. Okay, next up, and we are continuing with the massively controversial theme here, the next book is Our Kind of Cruelty by Araminta Hall. The book is told from the perspective of a man whose ex-girlfriend is getting remarried and he knows that she's doing it to make him jealous because it's part of this whole game that they have always played where they would deliberately go out to bars together as like a consensual mutual thing. He would like hold back and she would go and get chatted up by a guy, wait for someone to come over and then eventually give him the signal by putting on her necklace and he would come over and rescue her and it was like this exciting game they used to play. So he knows, no worries, this is all just part of the game and I have to play along. But of course, from the reader reading it, we can see that he is completely delusional and that she is actually trying to move on with her life and that he is stalking her. So books written from the perspectives of stalkers are not for everyone. I know that You by Caroline Kepnes was very divisive but I loved it and this very much in the same vein I really really enjoyed. I thought it was so well done. There's so many layers to what she's doing here. It's absolutely terrifying being inside this guy's mind because he gets violent in ways that he doesn't even realise that he's being threatening. He's just, it's a very uncomfortable place to be inside his mind. But she also does two things simultaneously, which I think is really clever. She being Aaron Hall, the writer. She simultaneously lets us get some insights into his past and his childhood that make us feel sorry for him and that make him human to us and us want to almost justify it. But at the same time as doing that, she also attacks the fact that that is what the media always does. So she points out that in court cases around these kind of situations, they always build this narrative around the man, why we should feel sorry for him. And at the same time doing the opposite to the woman, it's always about her sexual deviance and how she's a temptress and how she confused him and misled him. And I thought the balance there was really, really well done. It's not that we don't need to see the humanity in everyone, because obviously we do, everyone is a human, but while also showing that we mustn't see the humanity in violent men at the expense of their victims. So again, I would be really interested to hear other people's thoughts because I know that it can be controversial and divisive to 
make stories justifying men like that or sympathising with men like that, that seems to be the norm and the default. So do we need more stories like that? That might be some of the questions I can see people asking and I'm really interested to see how the conversation goes. But again, from my point of view, was this book worth the buy? Yes, it was. Really enjoyed this one. The third new release that I read in May was Whistle in the Dark by Emma Healy, which again I had been looking forward to because Emma Healy wrote Elizabeth is Missing, which is a book that I really, really enjoyed. Whistle in the Dark is about a mother whose daughter went missing for four days, and the novel starts just as the daughter is found alive and safe and brought back to the family but she has no memory of what happened to her and where she's been for the last four days. So it's kind of a mystery about trying to find out what happened, but more than that, it's mainly a character study and it's a story about this family and about the mental health of the daughter in the weeks and months and years leading up to this and the relationship between the mother and daughter and what needs repairing and how they can grow through this. And that's just a very beautiful story. It did work really well as mystery and it was exciting and suspenseful to find out what was going to happen, but mostly I was just really moved by the characters themselves, which is kind of exactly the same way that I felt with Elizabeth is Missing. So I really like Emma Healy as an author because she's kind of making her own little genre there that's sort of in between thriller and character study. It's a mix of both. She also is a little bit experimental. The chapters are kind of told in different formats, some of them, which is really cool. So overall, was this book worth a buy? Yes, definitely. I really liked this one and I'm really excited to see whatever Emma Healy does next. She's definitely one to watch in my eyes. Okay, the next book is The House Swap by Rebecca Fleet. And this is a story about a couple who do a house swap, kind of like the holiday. But a few things start being mysterious while they're there. And the wife of the couple, who the book is told by, starts to realise that the house is owned by someone that she once knew in her past. And therefore, if she's in his house, he must be in her house. So really good creepy premise, and this book does deliver good twists, it surprised me, but there was just something missing. And it's funny because on paper it's got a lot of things that I really liked. Kind of like I was just saying with the last book, it's got the mystery and it's also got these really nicely thought out relationship dynamics, and I thought that was really beautifully explored, but the writing just wasn't there to propel it forward. So I found myself a little bit bored some of the time by the writing, that by the time I did get to the ending, which I did actually think was a very good ending, I was already just ready for it to be over, so it was kind of a relief. I always find it really interesting when that happens, when a book has everything that I like on paper, but just doesn't quite deliver, because it's kind of a game in trying to figure out what is it that I didn't like about this. There's nothing about this book that was bad, it just didn't stand out. This isn't one that I will remember. So, is this book worth a buy? What did I give it? Did I give it a two or a three? I would say no, probably not. Unless you're someone who hasn't read very many psychological thrillers, because if this is maybe the, one of the first in the genre that you've read, you might enjoy it more than I have. I am very fussy about thrillers. I have a very high bar because I've just read so many. I wouldn't say this one is worth spending your money on when there's so many others out there. Okay, then I read The Water Cure by Sophie McIntosh. And that one was a very bizarre book. It's set on an island where there are only women, and it's about these three sisters who live there with their mother, and they've been told that the outside world and that men are dangerous to them, like physically dangerous to their bodies. So it's kind of described as a feminist dystopia for me, but it's a bit more interesting than that because it's actually never made clear whether that myth is true. Is it that the world has actually changed and there actually is this new atmosphere that is harmful to women, or is it just a metaphor? <coughs> I'm choking. Choking on the presence of men in the atmosphere, maybe. Is it just a metaphor for the fact that in the real world, in the current world that we live in, men can be very dangerous to women? And the book never answers that, which I really liked. It's quite a lot of work, the book, because it's very strangely written. It all reads kind of like a dream sequence in a way. It's not written like a standard narrative. But I really liked that, and I actually did read it very quickly because I found it very enticing. The story, by the way, is that men do show up on their island. And again, it's kind of unclear if they are having an effect, a negative physical effect on the women. Even when you get to the end of the book, it's a bit like, well, what happened? But in a good way. I just really liked it and it left me kind of thinking and I want to reread it. And I feel like on a different time of reading it, I might draw totally different conclusions. And I think that's really cool in a book. It'd be a good book club one, actually. Maybe I should suggest it for my book club. Anyway, is this one worth a buy? Yes. I would say absolutely yes. I don't think it'll be a massive great book like The Power, but that it will develop a very strong cult following and that 
I'm going to be really interested to keep reading reviews. I've already read so many because I just get a bit obsessed with like reading what other people think of books I really like like that. So I really hope that some of you read it and then leave me comments telling me what you think because I'd be really interested in that. Okay, the next May release I want to talk about is Dead Girls by Abigail Tartellen. And this one I've talked about before. I've actually talked about like all of these before in my balancing the books. I should really figure out changing this format because... <laughs> Otherwise, I'm just talking about like the same books. But anyway, I interviewed the author Abigail Tartellen over on Book Break, where I now work. So I'll put the link in the description and go over and watch that because she was so interesting and she was so good to talk to. So Dead Girls is about an 11 year old girl called Thera whose best friend Billy is murdered. All of the adults in Thera's life are trying to kind of protect her from what happened, but she wants to understand what happened and she wants to get revenge. So the conversation that I had with Abigail was really fun because it was all about this like feminist revenge narrative. For so long I've been reading these stories that have been really really important but these feminist stories that have helped women understand themselves as victims of the patriarchy. So books like The Handmaid's Tale. But I have now got to the point where I've read so many of those that I now find that I'm too much just seeing myself as a victim of patriarchy and can't see any way out. It makes me feel helpless every time I read one. Something like Dead Girls is the exact opposite, which is great, because what Abigail Tartellin wanted to do was set out to teach women to see themselves as potential victors. Yes, there is sexual violence in this. It does cover some of the terrible, violent things that can happen to women and girls, but her conclusion of it is to teach you to feel strong. So reading this, it made me feel like I didn't have to accept the place in the world that I've been kind of learning that I have. So, is this book worth a buy? I would say absolutely yes, I really, really enjoyed it, but I do want to give big trigger warnings for sexual assault and violence. It's not, I'm very squeamish, it's not like super graphic or anything, it's just mentions to a lot of things that happen, so I just feel like people need to be aware of that going in. So yeah, I really hope that people buy and enjoy this one, and I would also love it if you went over to my interview on Book Break and commented below on there about our conversation, because I really enjoyed interviewing her, I think that Abigail is absolutely great. So that's all of the new releases that I read this month, so that was a yes to buying almost all of them. And the only last thing I'm going to talk about is a book that is not new. These books were written in the 90s, but there is a new TV show, and that is the Patrick Melrose books. So I just, over the last bank holiday, read the first trilogy in this series, which has been published together as a volume. I should actually go and get it because I have it. One second. It looks like this. It's got Benedict Cumberbatch on it, and it is now a new TV show. There have been two episodes so far. And the TV show is really good. I've only watched the first one. It was... I'm very squeamish, it was a lot, so again, like, be prepared. He's a heroin addict, so you will see needle use and throwing up and all kinds of other things that I am not good at watching, but it was worth it, so hang in there and just shut your eyes for the gross bits. But I also just do want to talk about these books, even though they're not new May releases. Sorry, I am, like, 20 years late to them, but I really enjoyed it. I was not sure what to expect, because I'd heard the subject of this. These are semi-autobiographical books written by Edward and Auburn, who like his character, was sexually abused as a child by his father and then became a drug addict. So that's like not a cheery subject at all. But then suddenly there was all this buzz about the TV show and they are published by Picador, so I wanted to read them for work. And I was so surprised and taken aback by what they're like because they're actually, I heard people saying this but I didn't believe them, they're actually very funny. Also very sad, obviously. Also very emotionally powerful. I did do a video on these books as well for Book Break, so I'll leave that link below where I actually summarise like each book individually. So I'm not going to go through that now, but do go and watch it if you're interested in. Overall, they are simultaneously his like memoir, I mean that's not accurate because they are fiction, but Edwards and Aubin putting into words what happened to him and it does feel like this kind of healing journey. But at the same time he's using the books to just mercilessly make fun of the British upper classes that he was born into and that he just hates and thinks are completely ridiculous. And it's those scenes that I just found myself cackling at. It reminded me of like Vile Bodies by Evelyn Waugh, which is one of my favourite books ever. That kind of satire of the upper classes mixed in with these scenes of like severe heroin use and stuff. It's a strange combination and it works so well. I read the whole thing, all three of these books, in like two days. And yeah, I'm a fast reader, but also they're really page turning. So that's kind of cheating on that one, but I thought I'd put it in there. Are those books worth a buy? And is the TV show worth a watch? Yes, on both counts. So that's it for me. And sorry that you probably have heard me talk about most of those books in previous videos. So I think I'm going to change the format of these so I'm not constantly repeating myself. Are you guys interested in these like monthly new release wrap ups? Is that something that you like hearing about? 
or do you prefer if I just talk about the books in my balancing the books style videos? Or would you prefer if I talked about books that are coming out further in the future so that you can look forward to them and add them to your Goodreads? You just let me know what you prefer. I'm gonna go and make some dinner, drink this beer. Cool. It's so hot today. I feel like I can barely move off this bed. I've probably just stuck to it with sweat. Yummy. Okay, see you next time. Bye.